Hi guys. So today's video is about uh, fuzzing Solidity smart contracts using Foundry. So Foundry um, got a specific mod for fuzzing. It's part of the uh, testes uh, sub command. And I want to show you a bit more about how it works and how you can uh, leverage some options to play with that basically. So first of all, you have um, a tiny sheet set as usual uh, on the link below. You need to install Foundry, nothing fancy uh, there. You will get access to the forge um, command after that. So let's do a forge init and we're going to call that uh, counter uh, 2. That's the basic, uh, it's like the basic hello world for uh, forge. So we can go inside counter number 2. Inside this one, let me update that. Counter 2, we have multiple stuff. First of all, we have a file that have been generated, the counter.sol really basic contract, uh, a public number, we can set the number and we can increment this number. And then what is interesting is the test folder and inside this one, you can see the counter.t.sol. We are importing the uh, test um, um, object and the counter object in that case, that is public. We create, we have the setup function, really important, the name that will create a counter contract and set the number. So it's like the constructor of that. That's basically what you want to put inside this function. And then you have a bunch of uh, testing uh, methods, testing functions that will uh, test some uh, properties in that case, like you increment. So the number is actually equal to one. You set the number to X. So if you are calling uh, numbers, you should get X and so on and so on. So we have multiple uh, commands that can be used. First of all, you have the forge build to build the uh, project. So everything is working. You have the forge uh, testes. So it will uh, run all the testes we saw previously. What you can see right there is that since we have an argument, it will actually uh, start to do some fuzzing. And in that case, it will do 256 runs of fuzzing. So it's really nothing uh, in that case is not really is doing just some really short fuzzing nothing fancy and um, what i want to show you is oh actually to really fuzz the, the project and it should be something um, really uh, that you should do so um, if we take a look at the code again we have these testes that take one uh, u in 256 right there and the uh, fuzzing mechanism of foundry will generate some random value for that and verify that this assertion is actually always correct so that's what we call property testing uh, and that's something that is uh, as you can see basically by default on on foundry so that's really good if we want to do more fuzzing, we can actually specify some options like this one. You can modify the foundry.toml like that, and you can specify, okay, for the fuzzing, I want this amount of runs. Let's put uh, 15,000. And I want, for example, this seed. So it will be the number that will be used as, as a basis for random generation. So um, if I'm uh, putting 12, uh, 34, um, all the inputs that will be generated, my, my fuzzing um, campaign will basically be reproducible and will always be the same. So that's also really interesting to have something like that. You can just run a forge test again. And as you can see, already finished the 15,000 execution. Um, and it will just do that again and again. So that's really good. That's uh, one of those options that are interesting. There is multiple uh, of them, and you can see that on the uh, first testing uh, section of the Foundry book. Really interesting. There is also, um, as I mentioned, um, right there, sorry. Yeah, those one. There is some option uh, like the fuzz uh, option on the Foundry Tumble I mentioned. Uh, this one. So you have runs, you have seed, you have a bunch of them. I, I put all the links on, on the description uh, as usual. You also have the foundry sheet code. So those uh, stuff allow you to assert and enforce some stuff by um, by the, the, the forge, the foundry uh, execution engine in that case. So you can uh, create an address like this one. You can uh, assume um, that uh, the further will uh, count it as a rejection, like um, 
you assume that the counter will be different than this specific value. You can uh, bond some values that have been generated um, and so on and so on. You can even write logs. There is plenty of them. Again, uh, all everything is on the book. You can just search for, uh, like, let's say, uh, vm.assume, um, and you will get uh, right there, she could reference, assume, and you will get a, an example of that. So really, really good. The Foundry book is actually the, the best resources for you uh, in that case. So that's some really good stuff, and uh, there is some extra links for, for you to take a look at. Then um, we have the good question of uh, is Echina uh, better than uh, Forge or more specifically Foundry? Um, and also, does Foundry support invariant testing? So that's something I want to mention because uh, actually Paul made this tweet about like the benefit of Echina over Foundry, uh, over Forge. Um, and I uh, basically link, so that's Fuzzing Labs, um, I basically link the, the, the tab I've made for uh, the ETHCC conference this year, um, in, I mean, last year, 2022. And I basically made a, a, a huge overview of the different features of all the Fuzzer. And what I, my final result was basically that Echidna was um, <coughs> better in a lot of different features, uh, but especially um, Echina was supporting the generation of sequence of calls, um, what basically e e um, sorry, Foundry call uh, the invariant testing. That means um, over the time, after modification of the state of the contract, after, let's say, uh, in that case, set number, and then another call about uh, set number, and then another call about um, increment and so on and so on, you verify some assertions that are basically global to the contract. One good example, let's say you have um, an ERC-20, you have a maximum supply of tokens that have been uh, uh, emitted. Um, one of the assertions you want to verify all the time, whatever the state of the contract, is that basically this supply, the total supply of your token, um, never increase, for example. So that's the kind of stuff that are really interesting to, to find out. So the point was, uh, Echidna is able to do that, and is doing that, and it's a really important feature. And um, during the, the debate and the, and the Twitter thread, there is a lot of um, uh, pros and cons, and right now Echidna also implement like hybrid fuzzing, that is uh, something else, but I will not go too much in, in the detail. But basically at the end, the, the, the point was um, typically right there, generating sequence of transaction, and uh, it seems that it's not possible with Forge using the invariant testing. So I took a look at uh, the, the repository. To be honest, um, it's not obvious or you are supposed to use that uh, and so on, even if there is example. It's not as straightforward as uh, Echidna is doing, uh, but I think that's some really good start. So typically, if you want to learn more about invariant uh, testing or like generation of sequence of calls and so on um, during fuzzing, I really invite you to take a look at that. Uh, so that's also why I put the, the link below. But my final um, overview of that is it's not as straightforward and user friendly uh, that it should be. Typically, what I will expect uh, from, uh, from that typically is you will get multiple sequence of calls and you will first call setup and then you will basically call um, some public function like this one, like this one, uh, with some random value that will be set. So that's what fuzzing uh, we will do. And then you're going to call the, um, uh, the test um, set number in that case, with this specific uh, assertion uh, in mind. So let's say if we have a, a maximum number um, um, and I'm doing some uh, increment, I, I could have a test name, a test maximal number. My maximal number shouldn't be bigger than 10, for example. Uh, if I'm doing that right now, I will I will get no issue by Forge, like uh, cert as well equal, uh, equal 10, uh, and um, I will just do nothing else, like that's all. 
I, I'm just asserting my number is not equal to uh, 10, okay, or bigger than 10. And if I'm running that, it will tell me that it's perfectly fine because it will not be uh, context dependent. So in that case, it's not happy for whatever reason. I don't know. Um, oh, there is two uh, third number. I, I think. So let me just run that again. Um, so it will tell me that this one is not correct. But uh, oh, actually, I don't know why. Let, let me check. Let me check. Let's put some verbosity. Um, Oh yeah, of course. It's because by default it will be zero. So that's why it's, it's not equal to 10. So let's say I want to assert that my number is never bigger than. Uh, so I want to assert that it's less than 10. Okay. And if I'm running that, uh, it will be perfectly fine. So as you can see, it's just taking, is basically just doing setup and then calling my test, which at the end is not context dependent. Um, so that, that's the, the bad part of it. Um, what we are looking for when we are uh, doing fuzzing and with sequence of calls is basically you are doing setup and then you are calling some other public function and you are changing the state of the contract. And then you are calling this verification, this assertion, this property testing function again. So if I'm doing 10 time test increment and then I'm calling this function, my assertion will fail, but because my state, the state of the contract is basically my number that have been set to 10 after 10 calls to uh, test increment. So that's basically what is missing. And um, as I mentioned, if we take a look at the invariant example, there is some stuff, of course, uh, there is definitely really some really interesting stuff. And you have this same kind of addition um, stuff, I think addition contract, but I mean, you can implement that. So it's definitely something that uh, is possible and you have plenty of stuff to play with. Uh, but again, that's not straightforward and uh, it will require a lot of manual uh, stuff for you to do that. And it's not just um, um, like off the shelf, uh, like for Echidna. So that's my, my point of view. Uh, I think, uh, again, as I mentioned, like last year during my, my talk at um, ETHCC, um, for me, uh, and I actually, I think I, got, I just have the slide uh, yeah, right there. Um, my, my final, um, final point, no, sorry, it was not this one. Oh no, it was not this uh, this one. My bad. Um, I, I will uh, I will give you the the, the link below, but uh, the the link to the slide below. Sorry. Uh, so basically, my point at the end was that for, for me, Echidna is uh, still the best, uh, even with those new features that have been implemented. And for me, Foundry is definitely the most um, um, not interesting, but the most um, um, promising tool that we have regarding uh, fuzzing on, on Ethereum and so on. Uh, and I, uh, I'm, I will maintain my, uh, my thought on that. Um, so that's, uh, that's really good. Uh, let's hope it will be uh, more straightforward. You have plenty of links uh, on the, on the, on this uh, readme. And uh, of course, as usual, uh, I aggregate all the stuff I'm doing regarding Ethereum security, fuzzing, uh, and reversing of, of smart contract inside uh, this, uh, these free courses. I mean, you also have the video on YouTube. You just have the content, um, all the script and so on in addition on, on, on this. So um, if you are interesting about this subject and want to learn more and so on, I really invite you to, uh, to take a look at that. And please let me know in the comments uh, what you would like to, uh, to see next in terms of uh, like smart contracts, solidity, smart contract security, uh, and so on. So uh, thanks and uh, have a nice one.